Heidi Bassford Kirkhoff. Here. Claude Benedict. Here. Lurton Blassing Game. Here. Ron Durkop. Here. Sandy Klecko. Here. Julie Moslowski. Here. Judy Ritchie. Here. Deb Allison Osby. I Jean just got it. I'm sorry. I just got a message. She's on her way. Okay. Jean Wallerman. Here. And we'll have approval of the minutes from last month. Ron, I know you sent uh, Bobby a couple of corrections. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have any? What are his corrections? One had to do with the uh, um, energy assistance uh, program information I shared at the last meeting. So I had sent that to her in, in writing so that she can include it. Oh. Um, I think the only other thing was there was one section that was just repeated twice. Yeah. It just was redundant, so. Um, I'd like to ask a question here once. I hear so much about this geriatrics behavior, health unit. Is that for everybody? Is that just something to do okay, the last? Claude, um, excuse me for interrupting. Kyle is here in under citizen statements and will be able to address that okay, for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other additions or corrections? If not, uh, motion for approval. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, then we'll move on to citizens' uh, statements. Kyle, if you take the podium. And then you could address uh, Claude's question. Hi there, Kyle King from Mercy Jero Psych. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just some quick updates on the unit. Again, we're moving forward with our construction, expanding to 15 beds. That'll be starting the next week or two here. Um, and we're just working forward. We are expecting Joint Commission to come through with, uh, for our survey here for accreditation in the next couple weeks. So those are kind of the big things on our, our table right now. But again, we're looking forward to expansion. Um, but and then, Claude, did you have a question then? Or Time for me to ask that question now? Sure. <laughs> okay. No, I've heard so much about this. I read so much about this geriatric behavior. And I looked at this up in a dictionary, and they claim it's supposed to be for old people. Okay. <laughs> so could you answer that question? I guess I'm an old person. I like to know what goes on with my body. And uh, do the doctors know how to t handle it? Yes. Um, so, yes, yeah, we are called a geriatric unit, but we, we're looking for more of that cohort than a specific age. So a patient population that would fit well together, just because again, on adult units, you do see quite a variety in patient ages and diagnosis. Um, just my experience working on adult units, you know, I'd be running groups and classes. Um, I'd have patients who are 18 in for substance abuse and then patients in their late 80s and for depression. And it's, it's hard to do a group or a class that would pertain to both patients. Uh, so again, we're, we're licensed the same as any other adult unit, but we're, our focus is on that more of that specific population um, that would be a better cohort and because uh, so much of what we do is dependent on having a good cohort having a good group of people that can work together in our groups do processing um, so if you have um, you know patients that kind of in the same you know station in life it usually goes a lot better I see and I, I watch a little bit of TV and on cable television and there's talking about some doctors I believe when it's in two rivers the same fellow doctor and he's in <coughs> Moe's knee now taking care of this kind of a thing here. And some, you know, I want to see a doctor in Oshkosh area here. Maybe someday I do, maybe I don't, I don't know. But I got to travel to Two Rivers, or I got to go up to Mosley to see a doctor to take care of me? No. Um, so on our unit, we do have two inpatient psychiatrists. Um, so again, psychiatry, they specialize in, in uh, medications for psychiatric or mental health disorders. Um, we do have uh, two hospitalists, so Dr. Musunuro and Dr. Shaker. They alternate a week on, week off, and they do cover both our adult units and our geriatric. Okay. Again, as we continue to expand and, and grow our population, we are recruiting a dedicated uh, uh, board-certified GERO psychiatrist, so a psychiatrist or a doctor that's both specialized in psychiatry and also geriatrics. Um, again, that's a hard recruit. They, there's not a whole lot that exists right now, um, okay. but again, that's a... It's a field that's growing, and we're seeing more doctors going to psychiatry, okay. and especially more, you know, specializing in geriatrics. 
stuff. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that because yep. I know there's a lot of elderly people probably watching the show, want to know what they can do and where they can go. But thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, so we do have the two doctors that they see the inpatients. Dr. Shaker will help with bridge appointments and outpatient. Um, he does see patients outpatient at St. Elizabeth's in Appleton. Oh, yeah, very good. Uh, and, uh, and then a lot of times we are having patients follow up with their primary care after that initial bridge appointment. Um, a lot of mental health is getting, I don't want to say pushed on, but against um, primary care providers are taking on a lot of that responsibility right now. Um, the Fox Valley is better than a lot of areas in, this, in the, the U.S. where we do have um, quite a few mental health providers, but we, there still is a lack. So it's definitely something that um, we're recruiting for. We're trying to build up our outpatient. Um, it's just there's, there's a kind of a lack of providers right now. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Does anyone else have any questions for Kyle? Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else from uh, the citizens? Julie? You're just observing today, correct? Okay, thank you. All right, then we'll move on to new business. And Jean, would you like to introduce our speaker, please? I'll introduce myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Is there a chair in here? I'm Lynn Lawrence, and I'm the city attorney for the city of Oshkosh, and I brought my staff with me today so you can meet all of us. Dave Praska, he's the deputy city attorney, and Amy Vandenhogen, she is the assistant city attorney. And, and we brought a handbook along. Um, this is just kind of a little handbook and presentation we've done for a number of the boards and commissions um, that goes over the basic responsibilities, open meetings, public records, ethics, how to run a meeting, the rules of order, and your purpose and responsibilities. And um, we give you the book so you've, you've got it. You can bring it back and forth to meetings or refer to it as you need it. And then you can also call us with any questions at any time. So. Um, I'm going to let Amy start. She's going to cover the open mm. meetings and public re record portion for us. So, All right, and I'll start out with open meetings. The first thing you need to know is how to define what type of meeting applies to an open meeting. And there are <clears throat> excuse me, primarily two tests. It's going to be a numbers test and a purpose test. The numbers test are do you have an appropriate number of people in your governing body that could take action? And that's going to, um, in this case, it's probably going to be three because I think, how many members do you have right now? Nine. Nine. So a quorum would be five and then a negative quorum, which would be the amount that could basically kill an action would be three. So you're going to be looking for three. And then the purpose is, are you getting together just to discuss or act on matters of the committee? A committee or a meeting can be something other than what you're holding in this room. Oh. I understand the quorum. Yep. I'm not sure I understand the, the three part. The, okay. That you, <clears throat> we have to have enough people who will so if you, a quorum's vote, five. Vote against? Yes. So three people could either decide to vote for or against. And how do you know before an issue comes up whether these three people are going to vote for or against? You don't. And that's why you have to talk at the meeting, not separately. Oh, this the, is The so, whole point is. This is so you cannot talk before the meeting. Right. Correct. And we're With, saying okay. if three of you are meeting, Outside okay. of I a meeting, understand. to talk, yeah. you're really conducting a meeting that should yeah. be noticed and out. That's in social media as well as in person. Correct, and we'll go through that. Um, and to your point, meetings are things other than what's in this room. So if three of you were to get together at a restaurant uh -oh. to discuss <laughs> what's going on, <laughs> I mean that that you're falling under open meetings. So. As Lynn said, the best thing to do is have those discussions here. Now on the flip side, if three of you happen to be at Waterfest one night and are just there enjoying the music and you're not talking about what's going on up in your committee, that's fine. You don't have to notice that out. So it's the numbers and the purpose. Does that kind of make sense? All right, so then to go into the more 
social media aspects of this. Um, there's a few things you want to give special consideration to, and this is on page four. Um, starting with written correspondence, that's if someone perhaps from the community is writing you a letter. That's generally okay because that's going to be, for the most part, one-sided. You're getting that information in. Um, what you want to watch out for is when you start having a conversation. And that becomes more likely to occur with telephone calls or emails, right? And especially with emails, there's the reply all feature where you may get a, an email in, click reply all. Well, now there's three members on this email chain and you're having your own separate email meeting, right? So again, just something to be aware of. We don't want to discourage conversation. We just want to encourage it at the meeting. Does that make sense? All right. How would you manage that sort of a situation then? You're, you're wanting to respond to this person from the public and include the other members of the committee so you just wouldn't respond until you have the meeting and then you'd review the correspondence and then respond to that citizen publicly? Or I, I'm, I'm trying to get... You know. Some of it, in some of the committee... People will respond but say, you know, like if one person responds, everybody else doesn't jump in on it. Or include Jean and Jean will will respond and say, you know, to whoever Mr. or Mrs. Public person, here's the answer to the question and she can copy the rest of you. Then you once you know the person's been responded to, everybody else doesn't need to jump in on the, the conversation. So that, again, the, the idea is where you get into what Amy talked about, that back and forth. All of a sudden, it goes from kind of being a more like a public record to being more like a conversation and a meeting. And, and if Jean's included in particular, she can kind of watch for that. And if it starts to go that way, because I'm horrible about that. I will reply all, and I type emails just like I talk. So it's, it's very conversational. It's not the same as when you write a letter. And so if Jean sees it, she can go, um, this is starting to get in for, to more of a conversation. Should I put it on the next agenda? And it gives her that chance to kind of jump in and go, whoop, whoop, it's getting a little farther. So that would be my suggestion. <clears throat> then it also begs the question, in trying to raise the visibility of this committee, we're participating in some of the conferences and you know unity in the community and things like that where we're asking various members to staff it during part of the time is that supposed to be noticed always so like if you're going to another committee meeting or you're going somewhere to obtain information for your committee right you're you're there for a committee purpose or you're part like we're, you're part like there talking to the people city. right we're, we're talking yeah. to we're talking to people in the community um providing information obviously we don't have money to fund programs but um to part of what our strategic plan is to make sure that we can communicate to the community what is available for seniors in the in the area but yeah we're not trying to tell you you can't talk to people because you live here <laughs> yeah, and you're part good. of the community so right. you're right. going to talk to people there's it's a judgment call or gray area you're going to talk to people you're going to talk about what what you do the benefits all that's fine um it's just that if they have something that might be there might be an issue that might come before you for a vote at some point but you can go out that that that's kind of where the line might be going drawn. back to that purpose thing is where i think dave's getting the purpose there is not for the three of you who are staffing the booth to talk to each other about things that are coming to the meeting. It's for Deb to talk to the citizens, me to talk to the citizens, Amy to talk to other people. But if all of a sudden we go, hey, this person brought this up now, you know, we should bring this up at the next meeting and here's how it's going to go because we're going to hijack this committee and make it go our way. And we start planning, you know, that's where the purpose has now changed and we are having a meeting. But if you're, if you're handing out information, you're talking to other people, that generally, I'm, to be honest, this is the first time we've gotten this question, so we're, both, we're all winging it a little bit, but that to me doesn't fit that purpose section as well. There's probably no harm in 
noticing it, um, and it's not that hard to write a notice up, but it's really not a meeting. The purpose isn't for us to discuss it together, it's for us to provide information to somebody else. Okay, because okay. we, we, you know, I'm sure that we've stumbled over things, so, you know, over the years, but we're trying to stay on that straight and narrow, but still meet the purpose of our committee, getting information out to the community, and to have two people, okay, but then we've got a third one coming to cover, and there, there may be some overlapping, and that's where our concern came in. But no, by all means, talk to people, tell them about all the great things you do. <laughs> it's just that if you get it, it goes into, we, you guys should do this program, and then you turn to your colleague and say, well, maybe we should do this program. At that point, you should maybe, why don't we just put that on the agenda, and we'll all talk about it then. But uh, again, we're not trying to scare you into being afraid to talk to people because you should talk to them and because mm -hmm. you do a lot of great things and you should promote yourselves. So, And then things like um, state of the city or sometimes there's like joint meetings of bodies and that, that that's kind of a different issue and those do get noticed. How, yep. So, so uh, just jumping ahead to that, if, if three of you were to attend, like Lynn was saying, another committee, um, that should be noticed out because you're going there for a purpose. You're going there to get information to bring back here. It's not a big deal. All you have to do is let staff know. They'll notice it out, and then you're then you're prepared. If you don't know if more people are going than just yourself, again, just let Jean or Bobby Joe know um, ahead of time because it's better to be safe than sorry on that front. Um, another issue that comes up is walking quorums. So we've been talking a lot about three. Um, but let's say Julie talks to Claude and then Claude talks to Judy and Judy talks to Ron. You don't all have to be in the same room at the same time to be running into trouble, right? So if you say, I'm going to vote this way and then you convey it and you convey it, now you're running into the same problem. Does that make sense? And now uh, how do you police that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, again, the, the general rule is to just make sure you're having conversations of how you're going to decide something in the meeting. Because that's the purpose, right? The purpose is just we want transparency, we want an informed electorate. This is what the meeting's for. So, And you want your other board members informed. So if you're having discussions between two of us and, you know, Julie and I can sit and talk about it and we have all these great ideas and no one else hears it, it doesn't help the rest of the board either. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. You want to have the discussions in public because it might help someone else come to the decision as well. Yeah, the point of our talk is not that these are bad discussions. These are good discussions to have. Just have them out in the open. Uh, last point on open meetings, uh, since you have nine members, if you ever come and you don't have a quorum, so you don't have your five, don't have the meeting that day. Adjourn it out till the next time where you can have a quorum because otherwise you're going to start running into some of these very issues. Now if you have a meeting with four people, um, even if that one was noticed out, how are you going to tell the other five members? Well, you're going to go talk to them about what you just had on the meeting outside of the meeting. So we would just recommend that if you don't have a quorum on any given day, um, that you just adjourn it out till the next time and you don't have it on that particular day. Amy, could we talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, we have uh, presenters, as you are today, uh, <laughs> at every meeting, or that's our intent, most meetings. Most meetings. And, uh, you know, we're meeting pretty early in the morning. And so, uh, you know, if there's a snowstorm or something, our speaker's here, we're ready to go. Um, we have four members present. We can't even have the presentation. What I would do is put that back on you guys, just if you know you're not going to be. Now, snowstorm's a little different because you might not get here. But I think the courtesy is just letting staff know ahead of time so that it can be pulled in advance if you're not going to have a quorum. The problem is if you have a speaker here, how are you going to convey that information to the people that need to vote on a topic, right? Well, we're, okay. we rarely are and voting on topics. And they don't the same it's, opportunity yeah. for the interaction with the person if they aren't there, so. Right. We understand the interaction part of it, but for the most part, our speakers are here to inform. We're not doing any voting on anything of the sort at, 
and we don't anticipate it. Even without a vote? Because it get, like you're obtaining information for the purpose of this committee. How are your other committee members going to have the same opportunity to hear that information? Via the taped. Right. Well, and technically, under the rules, you're supposed to give notice. If you're not going to be here, you are supposed to give notice. And it's a courtesy to the other the other commission members. Under the rules, the, the city ordinance says a quorum, you have to have a quorum for a meeting, a lesser number can adjourn. So you could start and somebody gets sick or has to leave for something that you can finish out the meeting, a lesser number can adjourn, but you really should not be having having a meeting and discussing the business of the, the committee unless you have enough people there to actually have a meeting. And that includes the presentation you're saying? Correct. Okay. okay. It's inconvenient, but we'd, we'd come uh, back. <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> Other speakers, it might be inconveniencing more than our city staff here. So. On a, just to breeze through a few things on page six then, um, if the open meeting law applies, what's required? Notice, uh, generally that's at least 24 hours in advance. Staff will take care of that for you. Closed sessions must be noticed as well, but I don't think you guys are going to be running into closed sessions for any reason that I can think of. Um, accessibility, I, th when, I don't know where you guys met, but when the elevators were down, you just have to make sure you're in an accessible location. Uh, tape recording, videotaping, it's okay, and it is being done, um, as long as it doesn't interfere with your meeting. Citizen participation, the, it's not required. Uh, citizens just have to have the opportunity to attend and observe, so participation's not required. That being said, most committees at the city do allow citizen participation. And that gets us to public records on page seven. For the most part, you as a member do not need to worry about public records because staff is going to be taking care of this for you. There's just a, f um, if for any reason there's going to be a record that's in your possession or that's being requested of you, staff would get in touch with you. The thing that you need to be aware of specifically with public records is if you're using your own email for, uh, if you're corresponding about the committee on your own <coughs> personal email. And there's a couple ways you can go about that because those are our public records. So we need to make sure the city has a copy if or that you are maintaining copies. So for example, if you get a, an email from the website from a citizen that's emailing you directly, that will be saved at the city. But then you need to make sure that any response becomes part of the public record. So to do that, um, I think we CC, is it staff? or yeah, staff yep, now. CC staff <clears throat> on any response because then they will have a record of it. If you don't do that, you really need to make sure you're keeping them separately in their own folder so that if they're ever requested, we have records. But I think the easier way to go about it is just get in the habit of every time you respond, CC staff. So then you don't have to worry about it. And we know that every email communication is saved with the city. CC staff in this case means Jean? Okay. And Bobby, yeah. Both, okay. And the current website, I believe Heidi is the only one that has an active, the link no. is active for email. Oh. That, maybe Jean can check with IT. We, we don't do the mm. IT stuff, so <laughs> no, I have to punt on that one. No, I, <laughs> what I'm saying is, you know, because it is out there, but I know that when I checked a few days ago, hers was the only, Heidi's was the only one that was active for the Committee on Aging. Okay. We'll check that, Bobby. Right. We'll check that. Yep. Um, on page eight, ethics. So ethics can come up mainly in two different ways uh, or things to keep in mind with ethics. One is if people want to give you something uh, or uh, the second way is if something's before the committee that benefits you or a family member. So as far as 
people giving you something. Um, I don't know what that would be, say, not to pick on silver sneakers, but they're having a big reception and you're all invited and it's all the hors d'oeuvres and adult beverages you can drink. Um, that might be a problem. And uh, if it's all for free, if they're selling tickets and you buy a ticket. Uh, but generally, if someone is giving you something uh, based on the fact that you're on this committee, uh, now there's a distinction. You're all community members, probably a long time community members. So you have lots of friends and if people are buying you lunch or dinner or a drink because they're your friend and you've been friends for a long time, that's not a problem. So again, we're not trying to scare you from talking to people and doing the social things that everyone does. Uh, it's just that if someone related uh, to the senior center or to your committee is wanting to give you, inviting you to things or giving away freebies, uh, if it's a little thing and there, it, talks in here about what the value is, if it's valuable or nominal value. If they're going to buy you a soda for $1.89, then probably not a big deal. Uh, but if they're buying you things of more value, and I think there's a number of $25, if it's just a ballpark value. Uh, you know, Amy mentioned Waterfest tickets. If they're giving you Waterfest tickets or, or opera tickets or symphony or whatever that might be, because of your position here, and if, if, if you weren't on this board, they may not be doing that, then that's something you should think about. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, there's all kinds of, you can imagine there's all kinds of gray areas there, so feel free to call us and we'll kind of work through it. It might be a conflict and it might not be a conflict. Um, second issue is things before the board that uh, might benefit you or a family member or a business or nonprofit that you or a family member have an interest in. Uh, and I don't know, say one of you owns Silver Sneakers or, or one of the, the entities and they want, there's a matter before the board, they want to have a relationship with the senior center um, and you might get something out of it. Well, that would be a direct conflict or you are a family member. Um, so that would be, in, the, in those cases, I should back up. So uh, you're getting something on the first example. What do you do? A, you, you shouldn't take it uh, if it's uh, of more than nominal value. Um, the second example is it, what if something's before the board that you or a family member have an interest in? Uh, if it is a direct conflict, then you shouldn't participate in that particular discussion. You should recuse yourself. Um, and when you recuse yourself, uh, the Attorney General's office has a <clears throat> fairly extreme recommendation that is you get up and leave the room. We're not necessarily advising you do that, but you probably shouldn't sit around the table while that issue is being discussed. You can go sit over here and that would be fine, but generally you should recuse yourself. So those are direct conflicts. There can also be as with everything legal, some gray areas. So what if it's not a direct conflict, but uh, it has the appearance of a conflict? Say there's something before uh, some uh, business or nonprofit before the board you're voting on. It's not a direct conflict because it's not you or a family member having a financial interest in that. Um, and But it just might look bad because of some relationship you have with that. Um, just think about the extent of what that relationship is and part of it is kind of the gut test. Does it just look bad? And if so, maybe you should rec <coughs> think about recusing yourself. Uh, but you should keep in mind in all cases, uh, the decision to recuse yourself or not recuse yourself is yours. So for example, if I'm on the board and I think you have a conflict and I say you can't vote. I can't tell you that you can't vote on this. That's the decision that each one of you make and the rest of the board cannot make you do something about that. You may get looks, you may <laughs> get things like that, but it's your decision. Uh, and I guess that's the the positive side, the negative side is it's your decision. So if, if you guess wrong, you have to pay 
the cost of that. So if, if there is a conflict and there's a, a legal mechanism for undoing what the board did, then you are personally responsible for that rather than the board as a whole. So the good news, bad news, good news, it's your choice, but the bad news could be it's your choice as well. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. I would think it'd be darn hard for a politician even to talk to anybody then sometimes because you'd be breaking the law all the time. <laughs> um, I don't get into politics. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely feel that one. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, so, sometimes and it, it is funny because I mean, uh, at least for us on council, we've run a number of things past illegal. Um, because to a point, I think that was just made. Um, perception is reality. So um, even if it's really like gray, but it's so gray, it's almost white. Sometimes you'll still err on the side of caution just because perception is reality. And that's, that's all, that's legal ethics okay. in one page, you see, so how hard could it be, right? Um, the, the pages behind, um, page eight is just that one page kind of summary. The pages behind that are actually from the Wisconsin Ethics Commission, and we include them in the manual just because they're, they're really good. If you have an issue and you want to walk through it on your own, it kind of takes you through step by step what to think about. And sometimes these will answer your questions, and sometimes you need us. And if you need us, you call, and, and we will help you walk through it as well. So, Let's see. You've got your phone number in here somewhere? <laughs> uh, at the end. If not, I will make sure we get it to you. Why don't you just tell us now? It's, it is not in there. It's 236-5115. 236? 236-5115. That will get you to Tashina, who's downstairs manning the office right now. But, <laughs> and Tashina will get you to one of the three of us. Okay. okay. Uh, the next section is the general rules of order. And about two years ago, the council uh, went through and we updated um, chapter two and we adopted general rules of order for the council, and then they also adopted general rules of order for all the boards and commissions. And um, they're nearly identical. There's a few quirks with the council ones because they're just a little more quirky than all the boards and commissions. <laughs> but um, otherwise, <clears throat> it's just so that everybody's kind of running meetings the same way, motions mean the same thing, votes are the, you know taken the same way just to kind of get everybody on one page. So if you're looking at one committee, it's not doing things completely different from another committee in the city. And it's also because um, most of a, a lot of groups and committees rely on Robert's Rules of Order. Robert's Rules of Order really was never written for this kind of committee. So there are some weird, quirky things that if you followed strictly Robert's Rules of Order, would just jumble a committee up. And most of the time, people are just happy ignoring those, and, and it's good. But if somebody wanted to be difficult, wanted to cause a trouble on an issue, they could really, I, I could really bind you guys up on Robert's <laughs> Rules of Order, because there are just weird, quirky things in there, and it would cause unnecessary problems. So we took um, the, the pages that follow are kind of a, a chart. That's this is Lynn and Pam's rules of order. Pam Uberg is the city clerk. She's been the, U the city clerk for oh, a few years. I, she won't let me tell how many, but <laughs> we used to keep our notes so that when we did council meetings, we had a little chart so we could keep track of, oh yeah, does that require a super majority? Does it require, so this is basically our notes like cleaned up, updated, um, they're organized in kind of sections. You have control of the agenda, who can withdraw things from the agenda. Prior to meetings, staff can, can withdraw things. Otherwise, you know, if you're going <coughs> to withdraw something, is a second required? Is it debatable? Is, it, is the motion amendable? And what's your vote required? So that, as an example, point of information, 
takes precedence over everything else. Nobody, you don't need a second. It's not debatable. It has to be answered. Correct. And the chair does what it obtains answers. So if the if I ask a question, the chair makes sure I get the answer. Correct. It doesn't mean that I give you the direct answer. It means I get the person who can give you the direct answer. Or right. both. <clears throat> so you have, you know, control of the agenda, taking up items of bu of business. That's your original, your motions. I move to adopt the minutes from the last meeting, or I move that we <coughs> accept this um, uh, proposal. Dividing the issue, that probably doesn't come up a lot with this committee, but um, that if you have multiple things together on one, you can divide them and vote on them separately. Um, laying over, um, call for the question. This is one where, where we are different from Robert's Rules of Order, and it's just because after, from years and years of experience, um, this is kind of what was happening anyway, and Pam and I just changed it and put it in our rules this way, <laughs> that when it, if we've talked and we've talked and we've talked, or I've talked and I've talked and I've talked, and now Julie says, I have listened to this woman enough. I'm gonna just call for the question. Then the chair, Judy, would say, is there any objection? And if there's no objection, then we just proceed to the vote. And if there is an objection? If there is an objection, because I'm going to say, I'm sorry, but I'm really not done yet, so I object to calling to the question. I still have a few more things to say. Then the committee would vote on it, and by a two-thirds vote, you can shut me up. Okay? So, <laughs> so that's not a vote on the issue. It's a vote on whether or not the question whether, should be right. called. Whether or not to call the question. And on two-thirds, any time, uh, you always kick up to the next full body because a half a person can't vote. So you, if it comes out to be three point whatever people, it's four. You, you always jump up to the, to the, full, the full person voting. So Two-thirds of those present. Two-thirds of those present, yep. So you have to do a little math. But, <laughs> um, if the two-thirds say, yep, we want to call the question, then you would also have to take the vote on the question. So that's to Dave's point. Close the question, then take the vote on the question. Make sure you, make sure you do both because you get confused in the, the process and forget to actually vote on the question otherwise. But if you have a two-thirds vote, when you vote on the question, you're back to a simple majority then. Right. You don't have to have... Right. It doesn't invoke a two-thirds for everything after that. You've got two questions, one of which has the two-thirds. Correct. Right. Um, changing previous actions, you can do amendments, reconsideration, or <coughs> rescinding on reconsideration and, re and rescinding in particular. Those are often at the next meeting, and they make sure you get information to staff so that they can notice it on the agenda. Um, otherwise, you can bring it up at the next meeting, assuming that there, there hasn't been some action in the meantime that negates, you know, it doesn't allow you to bring it back. But we vote at one meeting, and I have a change of heart and I want to bring it back at the next meeting. If it hasn't been noticed, I can bring it back, but Gene will jump in and say, okay, we can put it on the next agenda to discuss. You, you reconsidered, you brought it back for reconsideration timely, but to have the full discussion, you need to notice it because you're, again, you're not, you're playing with the open meetings law at the same time, so you have to notice it, so. Um, then we get to questions and concerns and other issues outside the substance of the debate. These are all things in kind of coming out of Robert's Rules of Order, and we gave you a little um, short explanation of each because, to be honest, even Pam and I had to look them up every time because it's like, what the heck was the difference between a point of order and a point of information? And so they're all here for you. The point of order, if the rules are not being observed. 
Um, we have a citizen who's talking and we have a three minute limit on citizens and they've been going on for nine minutes already. Point of order, Madam Chair, we have a three minute limit. And then she would say, yep, uh, you need to wrap up your comments. Um, parliamentary inquiry, uh, I wanna amend this motion but I'm not sure how to do it, that kind of thing. Point of information is just, yeah, to ask a question to clarify something. Um, a question of privilege, here's one that I do not know where question of privilege relates to this, but it's things like, it's too hot, it's too cold, it's too noisy, I can't hear the other people because they're doing construction in the next room. And so it, those are the kind of things that come under that question of privilege. If you're having, having a problem, you say, question uh, it's it's too cold in here I can't focus because they're freezing us in this room or you know and hopefully hopefully someone can do something about it Judy but. will turn up the heat then yep. <laughs> <laughs> or you just sleep, light a fire Burton and Clot are so unruly good observation yeah. I'll pick and then <laughs> on anything um, Judy is, is the chair, so she gets to rule on things initially, but if she makes a mistake or if the, the rest of the, the group says, oh, we don't like that decision that you made, they do have the ability to appeal your, your ruling. That's why I have Ron right here. <laughs> Keep you honest. <laughs> so um, the last one, the last page of those are just ending a meeting. You adjourn or uh, a recess if you have a meeting that um, you need, just need a break, take, take a break. And selection of officers or temporary chair if it's ever required, we put, we put that in. The text that follows is just more description, kind of the same things that I've just been giving you verbally, but of some of the, um, some of the different motions. The, um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, there should be no, quote, friendly amendments, end quote, to motions. Correct. So if you have, um, it gets too confusing for the person who's taking the minutes. If you start doing motions and friendly emotions and, and friendly amendments to those. So the proper way to do it would be, uh, you know, if I made a motion to amend and and you talked me talked me back off it, and, and I agree. Yep, that isn't. I'll withdraw my motion, and then make a new motion. And the withdrawal does not require any vote. Withdrawal does not require any vote if it. Um, I'm trying to remember if it's been seconded. If the second has to agree. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think this. Yeah. Yeah, consent of the second. So if, if I've made the motion, Deb seconded me, I'll withdraw. She says, yep, yeah, I agree. That is. <laughs> Let's hope she does. <laughs> if not, you just, if not, you would vote on the motion, vote it down, and then bring the new, new motion. And it, it, it's really just a thing to help keep those minutes a little easier to keep track of. We try and make life easier for Bobby Joe whenever we can. <laughs> so... Um, and then following that is a copy of the civility pledge, which was um, adopted by council. And it has that on the, the back is the, the text of that. And that brings us to um, the purpose and interrelationship of the council. Were you doing that or was that? I, I can't remember. I'm um, tired. <laughs> so starting on page 24, the last couple pages, um, it's kind of context and some background. So context on page 24 is you meet all the time and you talk about your uh, committee, on, committee on Aging World. Um, but as you might guess, there's moving parts going on outside. Um, you're part of the Parks Department. Um, obviously related to the senior center, part of the parks department. Um, and this just talks about you, uh, obviously when you do things, you're a advisory board to the council. So some of the things that you do work your way up to the council level who will then ultimately make the decision. Um, 
and then some of your colleagues through the Parks Department or the Advisory Parks Board. I'm not sure that anything you would do would have to have a joint approval with them, but that's something Gene and Ray would decide if that would ever be the case. Wouldn't so, it be the Deb and the council to say what's the opinion of the other board in relation to us? I mean, we had an example at the um, sustainability board and the council would need to decide what the petitioners want, what the sustainability board wants, but also traffic review and the um, pedestrian biking. And we were beginning to talk to all, all of those other groups, but I think it should be the council rather than a committee. Am I miss? Uh, Stating that? No, the, you're correct in the, what the council says goes, uh, but you, your role, and, and to jump ahead a, a couple pages on page uh, 27, so that talks more about, that's what the council has generally sure. said. They've created you, uh, they've defined your membership in terms, yeah. and maybe to your point under B, you know, your duties, purposes, and functions. So, as long your purpose and goal is to stay within those parameters. Right. Now, if the council, if, depending on what the question is, the council may say the committee on aging is chimed in, and we appreciate that. But we'd also like to hear from the sustainability board, or that's for the council to do, as opposed to this committee doing. But on your page 24 the next to the last paragraph uh, are you saying that we should talk to the other it's our duty to talk to the other boards that may be involved it's not a duty i would think if you're considering something that might involve other or you think might involve other boards or commissions at that point you would probably talk to gene and try to arrange it with like say you're having you want to have a big event at the senior center and it's going to be up and down the river or on the streets or you know at that point you may be interested in hearing if other department or other committees and boards think it's a good idea or if they're going to object again at that point you would work through gene to try to figure out what the best way to get you the information you need because at its essence i think what your point is you might want more information about what you're doing from other people. Um, Example on your agenda today, I, I see you had um, under old business strengthen our partnership with neighborhood associations and other partners. So all this this sentence was just to say is that occasionally you're going to interact with other boards or commissions or other entities, and just to keep that in mind, we didn't we. Didn't mean this to be a all-inclusive list. These are the only people you're ever going to have to deal with. That's all that sentence meant. Um, you have a the second one on here about transportation and delivery. I'm not sure exactly what that's about, but it might involve the transit department or, you know, it's just the the last sentence there was just our catch-all of we we named you the council advisory parks board, but there could be other ones you interact with as well. I think maybe like something that I see coming up in the future is you know obviously we're looking at the remaining lakeshore development you know where Oshkosh Corp is and we have all the land you know so parks is going to be involved sustainability might be involved bike and ped might be involved um, if there's concerns here of making sure that needs or wants of our senior um, community that maybe there's amenities there that would be important I mean that's where there might be yeah. some collaboration in which, you know, and I can guarantee you during that time, council will be looking for the opinions and advice of all of the boards that may have some type of connection to that project. But that's like something I can see, you know, in the near future. Um, and then I guess the only thing we didn't touch on was the ordinances on page 25 and 26. Um, and that's just set by the council for uh, boards and commissions. 
and maybe the takeaway from that it's A through K. So you have lots of things that you do and you're responsible for. Um, and at the same time under I, offer no compensation. So not that we had to tell you that, but. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a long way of saying uh, thank you for the all the time and time and efforts that you guys do. So um, I think that's takes us to the end of the. Uh, yep. So no compensation, but we can accept plaques from the city. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question, sure. and I'm not sure exactly how to say this, but with the with us being under the open meetings and our agenda being spelled out ahead of time can anything be mentioned that isn't on this agenda if a person has something come up or they have a question or whatever can that be stated or must it be scheduled for the next meeting I have no specific example yeah. <laughs> other than that. <laughs> um, well, I'll give kind of two answers on that. So you, you have someone who comes up to give a citizen statement, and they bring something up. There is a provision in the statute that allows you to have kind of minimal discussion or answer that person's question. I, I want to know, does the senior, have a pro senior center have a program for whatever? You can have the interaction answer those kind of questions if it's going to be a longer discussion then it should get put on the next agenda or, or if one so, of us has a thought of something right. we'd like to so then oh, that that's, should be that's the other part if you have a brief question or you know something that um, you want to bring up then the, the same thing should this be on the next agenda or is it something that that you really want to have an actual discussion about or is it something that can be answered real quickly okay. like are we going to be closed for the spring holiday or you know what if it, it's it really depends on what what the issue is if it's going to be a uh, discussion if it's going to involve more than just a quick answer then I would put it on the next agenda. Well, like, so the council has at the end, they have um, upcoming council discussion, council discussion or up upcoming issues. So if you know in advance, like you have an idea, but you'd kind of like to run it by people. So and that may be something that adding at the end of your agenda. So you would notify Gene, say, here's a topic I would just like to bring up. And then at the end of the meeting, you could kind of bring it up and kind of gauge as to whether or not it's going to be a more in-depth discussion. And then you can, if, if it looks like it is, or you get receptive, then maybe that will give you the idea to put it on the next agenda so, to have a fuller discussion. And our other business, you could have C, uh, concerns of members? Or? Right, but there again, what we'd like you to do is call and let it'll say concerns of members but like the council we you know it'll say i don't know you don't have one on tonight <laughs> um well, like well, I give it like, help me yeah yeah <laughs> give me an example so once in a while something will come up where you know there's an opportunity for council to maybe participate in something and you want to let them know which would require maybe a discussion that's different than say for instance like um something occurs over the weekend like we had the uwo titans men you know win and uh, you know some high schools made it to state yeah. you know and so you know you ask permission from the mayor in this case the chair you know and you kind of give a shout out to the community so that's mm -hmm. different because it doesn't generate conversation but it you know and it's very short notice and it's it's not really it's, not it's like agenda but if you had something like um I think we should see if we want to have an ordinance on, or can the city explore an ordinance to let people drive segways down the street? You would, you would call ahead of time and say, Bobby Joe, can you put an item on for segways, you know, segway ordinance, and then, you know, have a brief discussion, but at least it's, it's, on the agenda and somebody who's interested in segways and and or 
terrified that they're going to be allowed on the street would know to that it's on your agenda and they could show up to talk about it most of our items on this other business section are informational we're sharing information about some upcoming event or uh, what's happening in the legislature regarding uh, aging proposals and that sort of thing not really meant for a lot of discussion certainly no decision making <laughs> by this body other right. than to but share you're it doing what so you should because anybody who is interested you've got nice clear simple statements if I'm interested in this I know what you're going to talk about and I can show up sure yeah so I I looked I looked back at a few of your agendas and I think you do a really That's nice it. job of putting information on there so that someone can understand it and and they'll know yep it's it's under other business I'm not you're not going to be taking a vote on it you're not pushing anything forward but if I'm interested uh, in it I can I can come and I can show up and I can get other, information no vote I can talk about it thing would be good. right in and today I've got one that's not on here, but it's just a quick information of an event coming up and a thank you for those that participated in one yesterday. And if you know those ahead of time, you can give them to, to Bobby Jo and say, I'm just going to say that, and she can, you know, list those two. And normally I would have, but, yep. but some of them personal come up circumstance. real short. Well, yeah. per the personal circumstances in my personal life kind of precluded the thinking. So, sure. yeah. okay. Um, any other questions for them? I guess we all question out. Oh, I like <laughs> yes. I want to ask one more question. It seems like every any type of a meeting we have is not really legal. I mean, there's a, there's a fault in there somewhere, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know where we're going with that one. <laughs> No, we're not the lawyers that come and say everything you do is wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. You guys do almost everything right. I just want to so, ask you a question. Thank you for so that. So talk to people, <laughs> promote it, and you're doing great things. Yeah, all for no compensation, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any thank mistakes you we make are incidental, accidental, and we really try hard to stay on the straight and narrow. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, again, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. It took a while, didn't it? Okay. <laughs> Time-wise, we're almost to the end of what our allotted time. We'll continue with old business. Uh, report uh, Lurton, strengthening our partners, partnership with neighborhood associations and other partners. On uh, March 19th, I attended the Go Neighborhood Initiative meeting, uh, spoke about the Elder Rights Project and the availability for free. Uh, to have a speaker, which is Gestrina Ebert, who's attorney at law of the Legal Action of Wisconsin. And the number I gave them was 844-614-5468. I uh, also talked about the six-week Healthy Living with Chronic Pain Workshop, which I think may be over now. If they want to check on that, it's 232-3000. I spoke again about the property fraud alert that Ron brought up, 1-800-728-3858, which is a free service. Uh, I again spoke about the Neighborhood Helping Neighbors program. Uh, volunteer drivers can receive up to 58 cents a mile, 232 3030 uh, talked about the Almeida Fisk Group Trust Program for those who need but can't afford medical costs relating to vision, hearing, and dental needs. And the number I gave them was 232-5301. And then I mentioned that I had given Pat Ruder a list of city-owned properties with addresses that might be used for improving their neighborhood, but not to make a park out of it. Okay. Thank you. Um, also, before I forget, what we've asked or are asking of all of our committees is when you do a report like that, we'd also like a written copy submitted to Bobby Joe so that she has exact information for the minutes. 
um, and depending on what it is, it actually will be as an attachment. Uh, okay, improving access to affordable transportation and delivery services for seniors. Mm -hmm. um, Claude, I don't think we really have anything at this point, do we? No new information. The only question, I gave you some cards as the people <clears throat> that have an organization in town and you charge so much a, a mile and that's the only thing I can tell you. It's right. Been, and we'll, it's a competition with uh, Phoenix, I would say. Right. And we had some of that information before and we'll bring, yes, we be bringing more again. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Creating community design and policy that supports an age-friendly community, <clears throat> Jean. Yep, I don't have anything to report. We're still doing some research on some topics we have. Okay. Improving communication and visibility of available services to seniors. Ron and Julie. Julie? Um, I don't have anything. I might chime in later uh, yeah. under other business. Um, did you want to go to Sue uh, or the... That's under... Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay. No, then I will wait. Okay. Um, all right. And then we go to other business. So, Sue, I think you had a couple Yes, of I just um, have something on um, medical assistance or Medicaid now covering some... They're talking about covering some dental coverage. This isn't what you'd normally think of when you go to the dentist. It's kind of we get some kind of dental insurance to cover fillings, cavities, um, maybe hygienic things where they clean your teeth every six months or so. It has nothing to do with that. The only thing they're talking about here is if, let's say, you need um, a kidney and then you have some kind of infection in your mouth that prevents you from having this kidney surgery. It would cover the treatment of that oral problem in order for them to do the kidney transplant, okay? So these are major medical problems, okay, that they're looking <clears throat> to cover that they don't cover now, which really is sad, you know? Um, so it isn't what you think. It's, it's a dream, yeah. It, yeah, so, um, you know, this is a good thing that they're talking about this, but it probably should have been covered a long time ago, um, and they're just looking at it now. Um, and then the other thing I had here, was, um, <clears throat> let's see, um, there's something brand new that's coming for mental health, um, and it's going to be for, um, uh, in the Milwaukee area, it's for people who've been um, on substance abuse, you know, veterans who really have uh, trauma, they're, they're stressed to the max, and so they, they are looking at, this is a veteran-run program that um, you can qualify to go to if you need help in that area of substance abuse or stress-related things from being in the service. And so it's going to be, they got all this money that's going to be coming in and they'll establish it in the Milwaukee area. Um, right now we have a couple, we have three different areas in Wisconsin, in Menominee and in Appleton and uh, I don't know, there's one other area. Um, and they do cover some kind of mental health issues, but the, it's not related, it's not service related. This is something brand new for people who have actually been there, done this, and it's gonna be a peer kind of thing where they're gonna be helping other people. So I think that's a great thing to come. Um, and it's from the Mental Health America of Wisconsin. They're you know, coming in our area. So I think that's a really neat thing to come. In our area, then, we would not go to Milwaukee, we would go to Appleton? Well, the Milwaukee area has yes. not, you know, been developed. They've got all this grant money. Ah. They have to now do something with it. So you'll let us know. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to keep up on that, yes. Yeah. Did you have something also on the state dementia plan? Um, I don't have that with me, Judy, okay. today. I guess I put the wrong thing in my folder, but I can talk about that the next time. Okay, that sounds good. You put that on the Excuse Run. Me. So that was oh. Medicaid dental care, not Medicaid. Medicare. Not Medicare. Medicaid or medical assistance. Yes. Run? Okay. Um, 
The, there's a, a bill being introduced once again. This is the second time around, at least, uh, in uh, as far as trying to get some uh, uh, credit for caregiving. It's called the Credit for Caregiving Act, and a bipartisan group of uh, legislators is at the state level now. Have uh, introduced a bill that would create a thousand dollar tax credit for people who serve as caregivers for a family member. Um, it's called the 2019 Credit for Caregiving Act, and uh, it's targeted at individuals, individual caregivers making less than seventy-five thousand dollars per year, or a couple making less than one fifty. So that's sort of the the cutoff. It's being supported by the by ARP of Wisconsin, uh, the Alzheimer's uh, Association, uh, the Greater Wisconsin Agency on Aging Resources, and uh, uh, hopefully it'll gain, gain some traction in the legislature this time around. Uh, it's to have been uh, introduced earlier this, uh, in March, I should say, last month. Um, and uh, there is a, a clause that says, no credit may be claimed by a claimant whose Wisconsin adjusted gross income per year uh, to which the claimant relates exceeds 75,000 or 150. Uh, and then um, it says that because uh, the credit is non-refundable, it may be, claimed, may be claimed only up to the amount of a claimant's tax liability. So if a person only had tax liability of, of $500, they couldn't get a $1,000 credit, obviously. So uh, that's some legislation to kind of watch. Um, and uh, along with that, uh, creation of the governor's task force on caregiving uh, occurred uh, this past month as well. Uh, governor uh, Tony Evers uh, appointed a task force, um, or actually created an executive order uh, focusing on caregivers. And there's a, a number of whereas, as I won't go into all of them, but uh, the, the key ones are the that uh, caregivers and the direct care workforce provide critical services that promote the well-being and enhancement and quality of life for thousands of Wisconsinites, and that workforce is facing big trouble. It's been in trouble for years. It's getting worse as uh, our population ages. Uh, so there's a significant number of uh, caregiver positions that go unfilled. Um, and uh, so this whole effort is to try and highlight the the need for more caregivers, training of caregivers, uh, financial uh, remuneration of caregivers, etc. And so he's established this task force. It'll include uh, members of both uh, caucuses, Republicans and Democrats, uh, at least one individual uh, person who receives care, uh, at least one caregiver, uh, at least one person representing um, uh, who employs direct caregivers, like a home health agency, uh, at least one individual from an organization with, that provides respite services and so forth, and they can add all kinds of other people to this task force. But uh, their focus will be analyzing strategies to attract and retain a strong direct care workforce, uh, supporting families providing care for their loved ones uh, through respite services and other supports, uh, assessing compensation and fringe benefits for caregivers, including ways to make health care affordable for caregiving uh, for the caregiving workforce through employer-sponsored plans, medic excuse me, Medicaid buy-in plans, or other health insurance coverage options. Uh, most private caregivers haven't got any of that if they're paid at all. Um, establishing one or more registries of home care providers and developing a plan to provide referral or matching services for individuals who need in-home care. Uh, another one is developing a plan to implement recruitment and retention programs to expand the pool of providers, and then exploring and developing solutions in collaboration with other relevant departments and agencies to support and strengthen the care, uh, giving direct workforce, increase access, improve quality across the state. So, um, We'll kind of be following what this task force ask actually uh, is able to accomplish. Okay, um, uh, Lurton had brought up uh, a little bit about uh, property fraud alert, and uh, since we we're able to get that on, it's on the screen now. Uh, we're going to take another look at that. We we talked about it a little bit in January, but we met over at the Safety Building and didn't have the electronics at that time to put it on the screen for our viewers. So uh, take some, uh, share these with your 
your neighbors and other acquaintances. Uh, we can end up with uh, the greater share of maybe going to Lurton as he meets with the neighborhood associations and rep representatives and so forth. But just to highlight again what this is all about, it's uh, uh, a uh, registry essentially. Uh, you register with the, um, the uh, um, Register of Deeds office to uh, have an alert sent to you if someone comes in and tries to uh, to uh, file a, a form or anything related to your property. So let's just say someone comes in, you own your home, somebody comes in with a deed, uh, it looks legal and all the rest to your home, they file it um, uh, fraudulently and uh, you will get notified then that someone's put a a deed in on your property obviously you want to you want to challenge that because you haven't sold your home or deeded it to someone else and that sort of thing so um, the uh, it illegally uses your property for financial gain um, and uh, it, it is one of the fastest growing uh, uh, crimes white collar crimes apparently and uh, this is free, there's no charge for this. You can either go with the, uh, the uh, web address here, it's very easy, you end up putting in your name and, and address and how you wanna be alerted via email or via phone number, or you can call in. If you don't have access to a computer, you can call this 1-800-728-3858 number and uh, um, get registered for this property fraud alert that way. So it's a great, hey, great resource. So sure. How many in the state, uh, how many in Winnebago County have had problems like that when people try to take When, when I've talked with the Register of Deeds office, they said they've not seen very much, like two or three. Oh. Uh, so it's it's not a, a, a big deal, but as, but the, as, as scams go, you know, all of a sudden they're crescendoing in, in one area or another, and yes, uh, it's just something that helps prevent yes, yes. you getting into any kind of issue with, with your property. Yes. And it doesn't cost anything, and uh, they'll keep it on record as long as, as you want it on record and you own property. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you, um, I just wanted to add on here that a couple of things because technically today could be my last meeting with all of you because it is election day. Yeah. Um, so this may be my last my last meeting. So something just for a future consideration on the agenda is obviously we went through the process of the strategic plan. And so at some point you may want to put on the agenda just to maybe have a section of a meeting um, just to, to see like what aspects of the strategic plan. Hopefully they're all working, but if they're, you know, there's an area or two that are not, um, you know, if there's adjustments that need to be made, certainly address those. And then I think for sure this year, um, probably at some point the group would want to determine, you know, how often do you want to review the strategic plan? Um, for city council, we do it every two years. Um, but in other organizations, I've seen it two years, I've seen it three years. So that may be a decision that the group wants to make at some point down the road. We did just a couple months ago ask all the committees to bring back what was working, what wasn't, mm -hmm. and to do some goal setting for this next year. Right. So, and, and just again, just comparing it to you know the overall strategic plan. Group. Which is what we did. Yeah, so it's just, just a reminder, because when it's brand, brand new, sometimes a review every six months. Um, you know, for council, we've done the, the strategic plan initiative. I think, I think we did our first one in 2012. So, you know, we were referring to it a little bit more often, not that we don't now, but as far as like the structure, because it was so very new to us at the time. So just, you know, okay. suggestions. So, and it's been an honor and a pleasure to work with you guys this last uh, two years, so. Else? I haven't voted yet, but I'm voting later. <laughs> uh, some of us were there early voting this morning. I was number four in my district. Oh, oh I was 24. So I figured I'd do it before I forgot. Okay, uh, my piece is a thank you to Zandy and uh, Ron yesterday. 
Uh, we were at the Caring for the Caregiver Conference, and Julie was representing her business. Um, uh -oh. it, was not a, it was not a huge turnout, but oh. it was a good turnout. A lot of good questions, a lot of good networking, and people seem to, a lot of, I think, the, the pieces, the handouts that we had that went really fast were the dementia directive and uh, a lot of transportation information um, and then a lot of other questions and we could you know direct them to the ADRC we could direct them to some of the other organizations out there so it was a, a good piece mm -hmm. it really was yeah I think we ran out of uh, the durable power of attorney for health care and finances and, and the yes dementia specific uh, so part and a lot of a lot of interest yeah in the fact that this was a caregiver conference not only for older adults but for parents of you know the younger children and in what was necessary so it was it was a good good event um, also coming up on April 13th is unity in the community and that's definitely a citywide event a lot of cultural type pieces um, it's up on the screen it's from 11 till 3 at the Convention Center and uh, groups like the Committee on Aging are going to be represented there. So uh, Ron and I are asking any of you that would like to put in an hour or two um, at our booth um, conveying information to the public, we'd certainly appreciate it. Um, I've already asked the Senior Center to notice that we're going to be there just in case we were going to be in violation of our rules otherwise. Um, but it's it's a great event uh, with food and entertainment and information and just seeing people that you haven't seen before. Um, Deb, I think you've been there. Actually, uh, last year was the first year and I was out of state oh, that okay. weekend. But it but was a wonderful really turnout. Nice. And uh, so we would encourage anybody on our committee to participate. So. Really? Um, I just want to bring up that National Dis Decision Day is coming up yes. in April. And um, Ascension will be at Bella Vista from 1.30 to 3 to help with those advanced directives or at answer any questions somebody might have. Um, but it's very important to get those things done. So, Is that health care rela only related or can they get into the financial power it, of attorney as well? Or? I think it's both. both. I'm pretty, okay, yes. Okay, good, yeah. good, great. So. Would you repeat that? Uh, Day. The National Decision Day? Yes. Yes. Or when Mercy. Or oh, Ascension. Um, Ascension will be at Bella Vista from 1.30 to 3 on the 17th of April. Okay, and Jean? Um, I'd like to invite all of you to our fourth quarter of life. What's your game plan event that we have? It's um, free to the public. It's held on April 26th from 9.30 to 11 at the Senior Center. And this is a panel discussion with uh, many professionals. If you want more information, call Jane Wells, the program supervisor, at 232-5300. She has um, a lot more details regarding this event. The first 75 people that register and attend, at the end you'll receive a hardcover workbook, and it's a phenomenal book free of charge for um, those 75 participants. We had a, a donor that donated 75 of these books. It goes into detail on having everything ready for you, for your families um, when you uh, come to your end of life. So it's a wonderful program. We have a health committee that, that has um, put this together. And um, again, if you want to attend, it's free of charge, everyone. Uh, anyone in the community may attend so thank you, thank you. Heidi I would like to mention that on May 4th the National Alliance of Mental Illness in Oshkosh is going to have their Oshkosh 5k for mental health and suicide awareness on May 4th um, the fastest growing population um, or have in suicide two. are white men over the age of 70 so this is uh, an important topic that we know us talk about. And I hope that uh, people will sign up. 7.30 is registration with the 
walk starting at 930. If you have, um, if you want to register or register teams, you can call the NAMI office at 651-1148. And we have many teams and we compete in regards to who has the largest team and it's a, um, it's a great day to remember those that we've lost and to support those who are struggling with mental health issues. Does anyone else have anything to bring forward? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion and second. Second. All those in favor? No, we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We'll meet you back here on May 7th. May 7th.